also with Speak and Jay. With me is Sean Connors, who's running for the freeholder in what district? District number four. Number four. And um, first of all, where does that cover in Jersey City and where it is? It covers three different districts. It covers parts of Ward D, parts of Ward C, and parts of Ward E. The boundary lines are kind of funny because it spreads out where I have um, the predominant part of the western slope and then it jumps down to the northern, northern end of Journal Square and then to if you rode Newark Avenue straight down to the foot of the water it's everything north of Newark Avenue and then a couple of districts to the um, to the south side of Newark, of Newark Avenue which is downtown also the city seat. Okay at this moment do you have a designation? Yes uh, I'm designated as Sean Connors always there for you. Okay, do you have a number though? Yes, and my column slot will be E3. Okay, now yesterday you were went to court. It wasn't about you, it was about um, Andrews. About what happened there? Yes, or, uh, the process that took place on April 17th was an unfair process. Okay, what happened April 17th first? It was the ballot drawing. Okay. And what happened on that particular day was the Hudson County Democratic Organization, since they were filing candidates in all positions that are available in this June primary, were given the column A slot, okay, that wasn't, you know, it wasn't um, drawn up, you know, where pe people picked, it was actually given to them. So Rob Andrews and another independent candidate for Senate had to go into the ballot box and that was drawn for the rest of the seats, which was uh, column B and column C. Now what Rob Andrews thought of this was that it was wrong, that, you know, it wasn't a fair process and it wasn't fair for everyone. So he challenges through the courts. And on Tuesday of this week, um, uh, an administrative panel of three judges ruled that yes, in fact, it wasn't a fair process, that the process that, that, was, uh, that took place didn't give every candidate a fair um, opportunity. So what happened yesterday was we went back to the county clerk's office and the positions were redrawn, where Rob Andrews um, picked column A, the independent, um, states, uh, the independent U.S. Um, candidate picked um, column B, and then the Hudson County Democratic Organization got column C. You mean there, there is no row A all the way? Since I was child in Hoboken, Democrats always had row A all the way. There's no way, uh, no uh, A all the way. Okay. And where this helps me and um, the other independent candidates, such as Sonia Arroyo, is that now we're bracketed together. And I don't mean bracketed together, but you can look at one another and you'll see the candidates um, line to line instead of one person being all the way to the left and the other person being out on an island as where we were. So, um, Sean, tell me your background. I know you're a community activist, but what do you do? Yes, I start my 19th year um, in the Jersey City Police Department actually this month. And um, 14 years of that has been with the Jersey City Police Department, and the other four years was with the now defunct Hudson County Police Department. And since day one of the Hudson County Police Department, you know, when I, I put on that uniform, I got active in the community, you know, much more so than I was previous to that. You know, even though I was involved with little leagues and community groups, I just picked it up a step. So you sponsor three Little League teams in yes. Jersey City, okay? Yes, three Little League teams and um, a soccer association team. And also. a soccer association. So yes. that's a lot you're doing. Yeah. Why are you running? Big question. Um, well, for the last three, well, I'm going to even say more than that, for the last five or six years or so, we haven't had representation in the 4th District on a freeholder level. Um, for the last three years of it, we've had an absent freeholder where I can honestly say that, you know, by actually being a participant in various parts of Jersey City, such as whether it's St. Joseph's um, Community Group, whether it's the Roberto Clemente Little League or St. Anne's, that you never see your freeholder. And I know that, you know, you can't be everywhere and, you know, and, and anywhere at every time, but, you know, you can make association meetings. You can listen to the public by attending different things and rolling up your sleeves and getting involved. And for the last three years, we haven't seen anyone on that. And I think it's, you know, it became party politics for, the, um, for Elio Rivera. Now, what are some of your issues when you go to the freeholders meetings? I would imagine you have been to some of the meetings. Yes. What are your issues that, that you see that kind of disturbs you? Well, the biggest thing is um, County Plaza. And just in case you don't know what County Plaza is, it's the properties of the old block drug. Now that was purchased by the county, um, I'm gonna say it has to be at least probably three or four years ago, okay? The purchase price of that property was $14 million. That property was going to actually, you know, um, bring all the county agencies together, which is a good idea in itself because, you know, when, when it's too widespread, people get confused as to where to go. All right, but this place needed to be renovated. And the first initial cost for renovation of this um, property was $15 million. Okay. Okay. Today's real cost of that is now up to $45 million. Wait, wait, wait. wait. It was purchased about three or four years ago? Correct. 
with an estimation of fifteen million dollars um, for renovation, for renovation costs, correct? And now renovation costs is forty five. Forty five million dollars. Forty five million as of last month. As of okay, why? I know we have a problem with inflation, but this is you know ridiculous. What's the problem? I, I could agree that we have a problem with inflation, but you know, and I checked with a lot of different contractors and developers. Now, when I asked about the you know the big jump of thirty million dollars, I said, is that realistic? Is that a true true number? And uh, most um, most developers have told me that you know what five to ten percent is usually you know um, a, a good indication because you know what obviously costs go up you know union rates go up and, and the cost of labor goes up but a jump like this is 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 such astronomical that you know what someone should be held accountable for it whether it's the um, the county engineer or whether it's the private firm that's overseeing the project because you know what how could you have that jump and not articulate it anywhere? Well, was this the lowest bid when they did when they put it out for bid to have the building improved? At the time, it was. So then it's actually, in my opinion, that's fraudulent. If you have a person bid a very low bid, and later on they are tripling the, the price of the bid, right. then that's not the lowest bid. Right, which is very much so true. And how is the county executive and other freeholders accept this really big increase in, 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 the, in the price? Well, when I spoke at the um, county freeholder meeting about it, you know, it seemed like it went upon deaf ears. You know, it went upon deaf ear. Well, it seemed like it. You know, I didn't get a reaction from from the freeholders. You know, they just actually sat there. 